to today's video. Now, if you've been following my channel, you may know that in some past videos, I've kind of sprinkled in some like new bookish content ideas um, that kind of pertain to other elements of life, but are still bookish themed. And so today's video, I'm going to kind of be nudging towards it, kind of warming up to it, but it's still not completely my, like, not the idea that I had. Uh, so I am doing the fashion and books tag, and this was created by Ishii a couple years ago, and also very cool channel. I'm really excited to do this tag. I think it'll be a great kind of warm up preparation for what I'm hoping to do in the future for other videos of kind of dressing up as characters in modern day. So not quite like cosplaying, but like cosplaying if they were kind of modern day and set in our world. Um, so I've decided to do this tag to kind of ease into that idea and just kind of have a little fun and see what else is out there because obviously I'm not the person to, the first person, I'm not the first person to come up with this idea. Like this has obviously been done by other people um, and I'm really drawing a lot of inspiration from uh, drawing and books on Instagram. I will have her linked down below um, so you should go like check her out. But yeah, so I'm hoping that in a few weeks I'll start doing those kinds of videos um, just because I have a couple other plans for other videos I want to do coming up. But for now, I'm going to do this tag just for funsies. So let's get into it. So I'll explain the whole kind of concept and idea again when I start actually filming those videos. But like I said, um, Alexandra from Drawing and Reading on Instagram was kind of a huge inspiration slash I had the idea then she was already doing it and I love the way that she does it like oh my goodness beautiful anyway the first prompt is to dress in your favorite winter outfit and talk about a good Christmassy book which I'm not gonna lie I'm not exactly in the mood for right now but there are many questions so let's go do this this is one of my favorite winter outfits it's very simple it's honestly just jeans and a turtleneck sweater, but I love this sweater. It's probably my favorite winter item, and I have a lot of sweaters, and I love sweaters, um, but I think this one is definitely my favorite. I, it's just, it's so warm, it keeps me warm. I can wear it underneath a leather jacket if it's kind of like rainy or snowy or very windy, as it gets very windy here in Minnesota. Um, and it just kind of, it's just, it's a casual, but it looks like I tried, especially if I were to add like a necklace or some other jewelry, I could definitely dress it up or just, you know, slap on a sweater and be warm. And then for Christmassy reads, I don't have a lot of Christmassy reads. I feel like a lot of Christmassy reads tend to be more contemporary, which I just don't have a lot of, let alone don't read a lot of. Um, so I decided to tell you about the Winter Palace by Ava Stachnik. This is a historical fiction. It follows, so it follows a spy for Catherine the Great. It says it's a Catherine the Great novel, but we're reading this entire perspective on one of the maids of Catherine the Great who kind of ends up being a spy for her. Um, so it is still about obviously Catherine the Great, but it follows Barbara bada or bada bada depending on uh, your accent if you are Russian or Polish and so yeah I read this at winter and it is probably my best winter read that I have because again the Winter Palace takes place in winter in Russia very cold so this is, this is the best that I got I don't really have Christmas reads other than like the Christmas Carol which I don't own a physical copy of because I listened to the audiobook of that so I'm going with the Winter Palace. Number two, dress like you're going on a date and tell us about your favorite bookish couple. So, date outfit? A little difficult. <laughs> because it really depends on like the season and the activity especially. Because um, like I do like wearing dresses and skirts on dates, but like I, always, I don't always know either what the weather's going to be like or what the activity is. So like, for this outfit, I have worn it on a date before. I have worn it on probably a couple dates with my husband before. But yeah, just like a simple 
kind of sweater and jeans. I mean, it's it's a good representation of who I am. Eh. Plus, you know, if I'm going on dates, it's with my husband and he already knows, so like... And then, my favorite bookish couple. So, here's the thing. It was Reed and Lou from Serpent and Dove, but in the second book, disliked them and their relationship. Like, I just feel like they, they like... I loved the first book. I loved their relationship in the first book. I did not like it so much in the second book because of all the miscommunication. It's like they learned nothing and it was really annoying. So then I also want to talk about, obviously, Jude and Cardin. I do, and I'm holding up Queen of Nothing because kind of flip of Reed and Lou with Jude and Cardin. It's like, it took so long for their relationship to go. But I felt it was so satisfying in the end when it did finally go, especially in this book. And then I've also read the um, How the King of Elheim Learned to Hate Stories. I've also read that. And while it, it's their relationship isn't a huge part of it, I love just having that glimpse of Jude and Cardin kind of ruling Elheim together. And, oh, I love that. So, like, they're my favorite kind of end up couple versus like Reed and Lou was my favorite introductory couple. I surprisingly actually had quite a few books on my shelf that I was debating between. So yeah, there are plenty of uh, loved, uh, couples that I like, but those are some of my favorites. So. Number three, dress like you're going on a mission and tell us about your favorite badass character. I feel like this one is difficult because it really depends on the kind of mission. Because if I am tasked to break into like a top secret facility or like something crazy, like secretive, sneaky, kind of like, if I get caught, then like I need to punch my way out of things. If I could, theoretically, let's say that I could. Then like, obviously, all black to try and be like sneaky sneak stealth. Like, I have just, like, a black jacket, black t-shirt, black jeans. So they're, they're jeggings, so, like, they're really, like, flexible to move around in. Um, but they're also very tight so that I can, like, fit into tight spaces. But I feel like if it's something where it could be out in the public, then I wouldn't want to wear this. Because if there is a possibility of... Like me just being saw, seen by regular people, then I would want to wear something completely different. I would want to wear something with like, yeah, I'll just show you. Something that everyone has in their closet, like a striped shirt, just on the off chance that someone else is going to wear a striped shirt around. Uh, again, jeans, and then I have like a jacket, but then I can always take off a jacket for a different color cardigan, and then I can always take the cardigan off. Um, and I can just kind of play around my appearance. I can take my glasses on and off. Um, you know, it like, and it also just really depends because this is obviously, if I'm gonna break into a business building, this is not what I'm gonna wear. You know, it really just very much depends on the mission, but those are kind of my two ideas of like either the all, traditional all black, I'm sneaking in somewhere, I don't wanna be seen versus like, I'm expecting to go out in public and try and look as normal as possible as to just kind of slip into the crowd without wearing a hoodie because all of my hoodies either have my name on them or have some sort of location about me like where I went to school, what sports team I like, you know, I don't have just like a plain hoodie that wouldn't give something away from my identity or something for people to see and be like, oh, this about them. None of my hoodies are like that. It, I'm the worst. <laughs> um, favorite badass female character. I don't, I don't, the thing is, I don't want to say Jude again, because I kind of already said Jude, but I do like her a lot. I love her sister, Taryn, a lot. She's not exactly like badass in the way that you would think, like a spy or something, kind of like Jude is. Um, but I'm gonna say someone else. Just kidding. I'm gonna go with Sabriel, because she is badass in her own right. She won't necessarily kick your butt physically, but she's got like the bells and just her character grew, growth, growth, her character growth. Um, I think Sabriel is pretty badass, just not in the traditional way. And so that's what I'm going with for favorite 
badass female character. Number four, dress in your comfiest clothes and tell us what kind of book you would like to read on a rainy day and just kind of curl up with. <sighs> comfy, comfy, comfy. Now, the thing is, is that I have like four or five different pairs of pants that are all like patterned pants that I wear like a solid color t-shirt with, mostly black. So this is one variation of the same outfit just with different pants and like I have like three or four black t-shirts from when I was a waitress at a restaurant where I just needed a black t-shirt so <laughs> this is so comfy I got these pants also my slippers I have two pairs of slippers these are my Dutch slippers I got them from the Dutch store um, and my hometown because we're such a highly Dutch populated area that we have a Dutch store that just imports a bunch of things from Holland and in another, not the Netherlands. Jeez. <laughs> Am I really Dutch? I can't say Netherlands. Um, uh, but I do have another pair of slippers that I will probably show in a little bit um, that I got from living abroad. And yeah, like I got these pants in Germany. They're so comfortable. They make me very happy. This is just a comfortable, soft, like black shirt. Like, this is my comfy outfit. Um, also, you're probably at this point being like, your style is all over the place. Yes, it is. It very much is. And it matches my personality. So, a comfy book to cuddle up with on a rainy day. Normally, I don't like rereading books, but I feel like a rainy day is the perfect day to get me out of a slump. So I've kind of also chosen the book that really gets me out of a reading slump. And honestly, for this book, I just read the first couple chapters. I don't even finish the book, and then I'm like out of my slump. And that is Wither by Lauren DeStefano. This is the first book in the trilogy, uh, the Chemical Garden trilogy. And it's basically where, thank you to genetic engineering, uh, males die at 25 and females die at age 20. And so this whole like bride napping and polygamous marriages start happening just to try and repopulate the world fast enough until they can find a solution. Um, and so it follows Ryan and she gets bride napped from her twin brother and she is stuck in a love triangle a little bit between the man who bride napped her, uh, which is kind of scary, um, but then also a servant who's going to help her break out so that she can find her brother. And her parents were uh, genetic engineers, and so they have been trying to work on a cure for um, the whole problem that they're facing. So uh, it's just a fun, it, like, it's the first in the trilogy, but yeah, I've like started reading this so many times. It's just like a good rainy day, kind of dreary, everything kind of sucks, um, but everything is also so cool. So comfy! Number five, dress in your favorite summer outfit and tell us about a book that you would bring on vacation, which I'm going on vacation in July, so I might just talk about a book that I, uh, I will be bringing along. This is my favorite summer outfit, and as it's almost summer, I'm so excited to wear it. I got this dress in Thailand, actually, and like it's just like a short, like, simple kind of flowy very summertime -y dress and it is my favorite um and also for anyone who's interested this these are the other slippers that i talked about for the comfy video i got them in kyrgyzstan when i lived in kyrgyzstan for a year but anyway back to the summer so yeah i mean it's just light flowy breezy it really works for summer a lot and yeah, it, I just kind of wear it anywhere and everywhere. I could wear it over top of my bathing suit to the beach. I could wear it to like a family gathering, you know, just so many places in the summer that I could wear it except to work, but we're not going to talk about that. And then a book I would bring on vacation with me. I am going on vacation this summer. I am so excited. My husband and I have just, we've had the travel bug for so long and we haven't wanted to risk traveling, but now that we're both fully vaccinated and things are looking a little better. We have planned a trip to Ecuador. We're gonna be there for two weeks. It is super exciting. I was just looking at Airbnbs last night. So excited. And the book that I will be bringing with me to read on this vacation 
is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. And I mean, come, it, make, it makes perfect sense, right? Like, it's, it's about actors and actresses in Spanish like telenovelas and soap operas. And so, like, it has, I'm hoping it's gonna have a lot of, like, kind of Hispanic, Central, South American culture in there. Um, and so I think it's gonna be perfect to read in Ecuador, right, as I'm like in the middle of that culture and practicing my own Spanish. So this is what I'll be reading on our vacation and I will be recording videos during that time of being in Ecuador and I'm hoping to go to a bookstore while we're there. So summer outfit and my upcoming vacation read. Number six, dress in a goofy outfit and tell about a book that cracks you up. This is not an outfit I've ever worn or will ever wear, but I'm telling you, I love my patterned pants. But yeah, no, so goofy outfit, here we go. Um, I'm excited to take this off because I, hmm. Um, but a book that made me laugh, that just cracked me up. I would have to say Red, White, and Royal Blue. I don't feel like I've really read many books that just stood out to me that just made me laugh a lot. Like, I definitely know there have been books where I'll be, I'll like chuckle or there'll be one scene that was like really funny and I'll laugh a lot, but like past that, I don't know of any like specific book that has made me laugh consistently. Number seven, dress with an outfit that has your favorite color and then tell us about a book that has that color on the cover. I love forest green. Yeah, this color, the color of the sweater right here is my favorite color. I love like that dark kind of army green, forest green. Um, I think it looks really nice in fall and spring and like fine in winter, but I don't know. I've, I've just always kind of loved green, but as I've gotten older, I really narrowed it down to like this shade of green. Um, I do also really like pastel colors too, but I don't have any like pastel colored clothing that I wear. I just don't have a lot of pastel colored clothing. And I have a lot of forest green kind of sage, not quite sage, um, I have a lot of this color clothing. I have so many sweaters, jackets, I have a pair of pants, like, I love this color so much. And, I, and so I love wearing it with like just a tank top or a crop top underneath and jeans, like just something very casual but comfy. Um, and so the book that I have chosen to go with this, I've chosen A Song of France and Ruins, and I don't have the final cover, which is very disappointing. I think, honestly, <laughs> that's one of the things that I've been wanting to buy is the new final copy of this so that I can have the beautiful cover because it doesn't have like the beautiful designs and it just, there's so much more to it. But this is the closest shade of green I could find. This is still more of like a dual tone green. Uh, which is not exactly it, but it's it's the closest I could find, and it has the most amount of green. So, I I chose this one. I read this book. I love this book. It is a very good book. But yeah, green. Number eight. Dress in your go-to outfit and tell us about your favorite book. This is my go-to outfit. I obviously not with the hood up, but I love this outfit because it is very comfortable, but it like looks not fancy, but like, I don't know, you know, it's just got that certain element to it. Again, with the pattern pants and then just like a jacket looking shirt, but it is just kind of a shirt. It's light colored. It's great for spring. Um, yeah, this is just one of my go-tos for just going out or I don't I can't think of what I wear this for because it's I, we've been in lockdown for a year so I don't wear things to go out anymore but like this this is just one of my go-to like outfits um that I really reflects me just like not interesting kind of nice and then actually there's a whole bunch of crazy underneath so 
And then my favorite book I've talked about on this channel a couple of times is An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard. I, I loved this book. I think this was the first book that I read um, doing booktube that I gave a five star rating to and I loved it. I love the magic system. I love the society. It's, it's one of my favorites. It just is. Number nine, dress in an outfit that you would have worn when you were younger, and then tell us about your first book love. Dressing like middle school me is not hard to do because I wore the same style of outfit every day, but I haven't worn an outfit like this in quite a while. I wore just t-shirts, generally like nerdy t-shirts or boring t-shirts, you know, just your average t-shirt, tucked into jeans. Um, and I, a huge reason I did this was because I was such a small child. I was a tiny human being and so nothing fit me. And so I would just buy these t-shirts that didn't fit me because nothing fit me and I would tuck them into... I would, it, it was middle school where I learned to tuck in shirts and I'm so glad I did because then, you know, it's it's not like super obvious that the shirt doesn't fit me, like everything. But, but then too, my jeans wouldn't fit me because no pair of jeans has ever fit me except for the one pair that I bought in Central Asia. And then I also wore this sweatshirt, this specific sweatshirt I've had since like fifth or sixth grade. It's, it's kind of phenomenal. Um, but then the real, the real kicker about what I wore when I was younger was I, uh, I wore these big ass boots every day, no matter the season. It could be blazing hot outside, but my big boots is, were just the quickest thing to like get on my feet. And so I wore big boots and I have, I still have, I have a pair of hiking boots, so I should be wearing those right now, but they're kind of, um, they're kind of covered in other out of season items at the moment. So I'm not actually wearing them, but like this is just me, middle school, high school, especially early high school, kind of before I really got a style. It was just like t-shirt, this sweatshirt, jeans, and big shoes. It was not a great time, but you know, it could have been so much worse, so... Mm. And then my first book love, I always say that the Cat Warrior series was my first kind of books that I read that I loved, but that's because those are the first books that I read on my own. The first books that I read that my mom read to me that I loved were the Laura Ingalls Wilder series books. And she like read those a lot to me and then we read her daughter Rose and we even started on her mom Catherine but we never kind of got past those because that's when I had finally like gotten older and was just reading more on my own but like yep Laura Ingalls Wilders yeah there's not too much to say this is also probably the oldest item of clothing in my closet and yeah it, it's even still the point where like it's it's I wore it like this when I was younger and I can still wear it like that. Um, but I won't include this in the outfit that I've had for the longest time because I'm going to do a completed outfit for that versus this is just the oldest clothing item that I have. So there you go. But one thing to keep in mind though is like imagine this with smaller thinner frame glasses and then hair going down to here that I either always wore, I pretty much always wore it in some sort of braid, either like a side braid, a uh, fishtail, or like Dutch braid or whatever, because I had super long hair and I was really into braiding it because if it wasn't braided in some way, it was super tangly and it was just a pain. But it was really good for ballet because I could make really nice buns with the hair for ballet, so yeah. Otherwise, I haven't changed at all in terms of how I look. I just got bigger glasses, I cut my hair, and I look the exact same. So people still think I'm like, if I wore this outside, I bet people would think I'm 16. Because I even went to get my second shot of the vaccine two weeks ago, so I am fully vaccinated, woohoo. Um, and the lady asked me if I was 
over 18. And I was like, yes, I'm turning 21 next month and I know I'm just gonna get carded everywhere for like ever, but like, yeah, I wonder if I were to go out in public in this outfit, if I would even be questioned if I'm old enough to drive. Okay, I'm gonna change now. Number nine, dress in the oldest outfit that you own and tell us about the oldest book that has been on your TBR. This is probably the oldest outfit I own just because I know this shirt is really old. I think it is one of the two oldest shirts that I have because I, for some reason, buy everything in pairs. So it's like this and one other shirt, but then this also. I got at the same time to go with the shirt and then these are the oldest jeans I own or like the oldest pants that I own they're just like simple jean shorts um, yeah I recently have been revamping my closet a lot so I don't have a lot of old clothing because I've been changing around my style I've been getting older I'm kind of in that transitional life phase where it's like I'm a college student I'm living on my own I'm also married like there are all these like elements I'm just like you know I just need an older esque wardrobe than uh, what I wore in like middle school and high school so this is the oldest outfit that I own and then ooh, a book that's been on my TBR the longest so if you go to my Goodreads and I'm at my Goodreads now so I'm just like the first few books on there I it took me a very long time to discover Goodreads like I didn't have Goodreads when I was younger in like middle school and even early high school I just didn't know it existed so the oldest book on my TBR <laughs> okay so there are two there's Six of Crows first book I ever put on my TBR but the oldest book I've been wanting to read even before that it's the second oldest on my TBR and that's a journey to the center of the earth um, by Jules Verne and I have it on my Kindle I own it and I just haven't read it but I feel like I'm hoping to read that book on the plane this summer when we travel. Um, I just, I like bringing my Kindle when we travel because I have books on there that I haven't read yet and some of my favorites on there as well. So, um, I'm, I'm, that's the oldest book on my TBR and I am hoping to read it somewhat soon. Um, yeah, there you go. Number 10, dress in clothes that you would have at a sleepover and then talk about five bookish characters that you would like to have late night chats with. And not just sleepovers, but any sort of movie marathon or lazy day, I become a koala. So I, for sleepovers, will wear my onesie. I will not sleep in my onesie because I get way too hot and it's also just so big that whenever I try to like turn at night because I don't just sleep in one position, I get twisted up and then I wake up and it's just not fun. So I won't sleep in this, but this is what I will wear for the sleepover 100% with no shame. Uh, koala onesie all the way. My entire family owns onesies and we all wear them for movie marathon day which for us is black friday and yeah it's, it's a whole thing now the prompt that goes along with this is five characters who i would want to invite to my sleepover and the difficult thing about this is that i feel like there are five characters i would love to invite and talk with at a sleepover but I don't think they would necessarily get along well so I'm just gonna tell you what five characters I would love to have a sleepover with either in one big group or just one-on-one -on -one. they may not mesh well together but I want them there so the five people I would invite this is such a difficult list for me to create because it's like oh I don't know if anyone and then I came up with too many people it was just oh it was a whole thing first off I would have to invite Hermione Granger from Harry Potter uh even though I am against what JK Rowling has said I feel like Hermione at a sleepover as her own independent being would be amazing uh relatable on so many levels uh being friends with like boys and always you know but also just like working hard in school, we could share like study tips, etc. and so forth. I would love, so Hermione Granger, um, 
Mina from Star Daughter. She is uh, Sheetal's best friend, and I think Mina was just so fun and so much more like fed up with everyone's crap and everything and she was just like come on guys and I feel like that is that's the kind of character I like in books and that's the kind of person I like want to be around uh, so I feel like Mina would be a lot of fun to have over as well I would also say Maya from Spin the Dawn because she could offer great fashion advice which clearly is something I need as you've been watching this video um, yeah and like she, she would just kind of be like that calming presence and keep everyone like calm and sane. Um, so I would like her and then Citra from Sight I think would be a lot of fun and really interesting to just kind of chat with. Yeah, I mean she would, she kind of understands the idea of life a little bit better so I think she would have a good idea of how to like have a good sleepover. And then the last one would probably be I'm so torn. I am so torn. I probably will go with Sydney from An Unkindness of Magicians, but I was very close to one of the Aleph sisters from Candle in the Flame. Um, but then I would want to have all three of them over, and that's just that would be a lot. So I'm gonna go with Sydney. Um, she is a very cool, like badass kind of holds her own, and I feel like she would be a good like pump up girl to uh, just kind of like raise everyone's self esteem, but also just be epic and badass with. The right amount of classy, like there's just so much I would love to talk to her about and just chat with and learn from. So that's my really random sleepover. I don't know if people would necessarily get along with each other um, or really have anything in common. I guess those are just kind of some of my favorite characters that I would love to hang out with in their own right. So. And number 11, dress like a movie star and tell us what book to movie adaptation is your favorite or is the best? I have no idea what a movie star would wear at all. Slash, that's not my style. I feel like movie stars nowadays just wear whatever they want, obviously. Like, they wear something comfortable whenever they're out living their life like a normal human being. Um, and then so I was like, oh, I could do a red carpet look, except I, I don't have any fancy dresses. I don't even have a floor length dress. So, hmm, so I don't really have a good outfit for this one. I literally just took like one of my favorite dresses and tucked it into one of my favorite pairs of sweatpants. Cause yeah, I feel like fitted tops are nice, but honestly, they're just trying to be as comfortable as we are. Book to movie adaptation. Oof, this is a tough one because I don't, I don't partake in that type of, uh, like there are so many books that I've read that I haven't seen the movie for, and then so many movies that I've seen that I haven't read the book for, and then the ones where I have read the book and seen the movie, it just wasn't that great. So I might go with something old, like maybe like Maze Runner. I I read the first book and I thought it was good and I watched the movie and I thought it was good so maybe that one but that's just yeah no I, I, I know a lot of like really bad uh, book to film adaptations but I don't know a lot of like good ones per se and of course they're never gonna be perfect but that's just gonna be what it is so yeah that's what I would say Thank you all so much for watching this video. I had an absolute blast and I hope you did too. If you were interested in this video, I will have Ishii's original video tagged down below, obviously. Um, but if you're interested in doing it, I'm going to go ahead and tag you. I'm not going to tag anyone specifically because no one specifically tagged me and I'm kind of using this as a bridgeway into a larger project that I want to start. I'm hoping to start kind of doing more of these modern cosplay videos in the summertime when I don't have school, which should be in just a couple weeks. How exciting. The end of the semester is so stressful but so near and I'm so ready for it. So hopefully then you'll be able to have just better content and I can start on this project and I'm super excited. So, But until then and until I see you guys in the next video, which will be 
on Thursday. <laughs> I just realized. I post videos every Thursday and feel free to like this video if you liked it. Talk about any of your favorite outfits and books down below. I would really love to hear from you guys and keep chatting. Um, but otherwise, feel free to subscribe, click the bell icon so you can get notified every Thursday when I upload. And until I see you guys in the next video, I wish you a happy reading.